Since I've started this playlist, a few people have asked me, if Cardinal Newman was a liberal, why did he attack liberalism? And my answer is going to be given in this video, and I'll give you the spoiler, and that is that Cardinal Newman never did criticize liberalism. About a month or so ago, I posted this image on Twitter. It generated a fair amount of discussion, and John O.C. suggested that Protestantism should have been listed at the top as the first step toward the descent toward atheism, and I agreed with him. So. The first major departure from the Age of Faith was Protestantism, which occurred in the 1500s. Protestantism is disobedience, and it echoed the first sin of the fallen angels. The next step was liberalism, which supported the belief in freedom of religion and freedom of conscience, as did Cardinal Newman. Classical liberalism first reared its head during the American Revolution and then during the French Revolution. Though Protestantism tends to lead toward liberalism, it doesn't always follow and so there are some Protestants who are not liberals. The next step would be indifferentism, which supports the belief that one religion is good as another. Liberalism tends to lead to indifferentism. However, it isn't always the case, and some liberals, such as Cardinal Newman, weren't indifferent toward religion. Cardinal Newman, by definition, was a liberal because he supported both freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. Earlier on this playlist, I devoted an entire video to Cardinal Newman and his support for freedom of conscience. And in the last video, I mentioned how he also supported freedom of religion. And here's another quote. It will be admitted that to deny any individual Christians the use of terms not found in Scripture, as such, would be a superstition and an encroachment on their religious liberty. So Cardinal Newman seems to think that heresy and religious liberty is a right of individuals. Toward the end of his life, when Cardinal Newman was 78 years old, his powerful friend, the Duke of Norfolk, urged Pope Leo XIII to reward Newman for his apologetics against Protestantism by making him a cardinal. Newman had never been a bishop, so unless there was a conclave, Newman wouldn't really have any authority in his position. It would be mostly honorary. Newman was being thrown a bone as a reward. Like Bishop Sheen and Bishop Barron, he was being rewarded for being a talking head. However, when asked about making Newman a cardinal, Pope Leo said, It was not easy. It was not easy. They said he was too liberal. So from this quote from Pope Leo, it appears that the elevation of Cardinal Newman met with some resistance, and this is acknowledged by many other sources. Pope Leo saying, It was not easy. It was not easy, suggests that the Pope needed to do something or have something done to clear the way to make Newman a cardinal. And based on the timing and the way things unfolded, it seems almost certain that Pope Leo asked Newman to do something to separate himself from liberalism. Therefore, upon his elevation, Newman did so in an extremely disingenuous manner. In his Biglietto speech, he said, For thirty, forty, fifty years I have resisted to the best of my powers the spirit of liberalism. But if he ever did so, I can't find a single example of it. Newman continued, Liberalism and religion is the doctrine that there is no positive truth in religion but one creed is as good as another, and this is the teaching which is gaining substance and force daily. It is inconsistent with any recognition of any religion as true. It teaches that all are to be tolerated, for all are matters of opinion. And Newman's speech continued to attack indifferentism at length, but in this speech he never attacked or even touched upon freedom of religion or freedom of conscience. So we see that Newman really wasn't criticizing liberalism, and he really wasn't recanting any of his liberal positions. Instead, he was trying to distance himself from liberalism by redefining liberalism as indifferentism. But as we discuss, liberalism and indifferentism are different things. And this is set forth very clearly by Pope Pius IX, who differentiated between liberalism and indifferentism in his syllabus of errors. Pope Pius made it clear that they are different things by devoting a single section to the errors of indifferentism, which is the belief that one religion is as good as another. And then later in the syllabus, Pope Pius devoted a separate section to the errors concerning liberalism. In regard to the section concerning liberalism, there are four errors that are condemned. The first two, errors 77 and 78, are the errors embracing freedom of religion. And as I said in the last video, we mentioned how Cardinal Newman embraced freedom of religion and spoke of it as something to be welcomed. Error 79 in the liberalism section touches upon both freedom of religion and freedom of conscience. And as we stated, Cardinal Newman extolled freedom of conscience throughout his entire career. 
So liberalism may lead to indifferentism, though it does not always do so. Though indifferentism may be considered a subset of liberalism, Cardinal Newman was not indifferent. He defended Catholicism for many years, though many errors crept into his writing. So with this speech, Newman was being very deceptive and disingenuous. Perhaps no one in the church brought this up because they knew that Newman's innovative definition of liberalism generally applied to Protestants who believe that they are part of some big imaginary invisible church. Protestants, however, were quick to notice Newman was creating a new definition of liberalism, and in doing so, he was just trolling them. So by giving lip service to distancing himself from liberalism, and while at the same time trolling Protestantism, Newman put a band-aid on his liberalism. But the Biglietto speech was not the first time that Newman defined liberalism in a strange manner so that the term would not apply to him. Earlier in 1865 he wrote that, Liberalism is then the mistake of subjecting to human judgment those revealed doctrines which are in their nature beyond and independent of it, and of claiming to determine on intrinsic grounds the truth and value of propositions which rest for their reception simply on the external authority of divine word. Now certainly, the party of whom I have been speaking, taken as a whole, were of a character of mind out of which liberalism might easily grow up, as in fact it did. So in 1865, Newman redefined liberalism completely different than he did in his Biglietto speech, and he defined it in 1865 as the mistake of subjecting revealed doctrines to human judgment, which is a long-winded way of saying liberalism is sola scriptura. And again, no one else ever defined liberalism as sola scriptura. And of course, after his conversion, no one accused Newman of clinging to sola scriptura. So, again, Newman concocted his own definition of liberalism. And once again, he defined it in a way that didn't apply to him, but at the same time, he used it to troll Protestantism. And he did so because that was his job. He was an apologist against Protestantism, and he trolled Protestantism. It was only after his death that his writings seemed to achieve a special status in some people's minds, and it actually influenced Catholicism to the point where his error-ridden essay on the development of doctrine was assumed to be a doctrine of the church. Newman was clearly disingenuous, and I'm not the first person to question Newman's honesty. Years before this incident, he wrote, The only thing which I feel is the charge of dishonesty. Really, no one but O'Connell is called distinctly, it's so ordinary, a liar, as I am. When it comes to sketchy states of the Novus Ordo Church, there are several. Cardinal Newman ranks toward the top. His writings should be avoided by serious Catholics. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one, but in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel, and also, please pray for the church.